What's up, everybody? It is your brother, Jerry Flowers, and my brother, Warren Francis. And we decided to do something called When Kings Talk. Yep. Just good questions that we believe uh, is necessary and relevant to discuss amongst men. And uh, just in case you're curious to get into the mind of a man, we want to kind of have dialogue and uh, some discussion. So I think the first thing is, how did you know your wife? was your wife like how did you know like this is it like this like is she was the one yeah she's future baby mama she's your good thing all that i think the first time i saw her she was she was interesting okay and it was like she she already had a character about her that i didn't i wasn't used to mm -hmm. so it was kind of like let me see what this is about and it's like i always had a vision of what I wanted my wife to look like and mm -hmm. how I wanted her to be. And she, she looked like she could fit that, but I was still like interested to see, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like she was strong, independent. Yeah. I could just tell by the way she carried herself. So I was like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. And then we was long distance though. Wow. Like we was long like distance. long distance. How was that? Like, I, I was in Wyoming at okay. college, like of okay. all places. Yeah. <laughs> so she was in Houston. Mm -hmm. So we was talking online like yeah. for the first three months. Wow. So long distance long, and online. Man. Wow. FaceTime, all of that. Well, Skype. Yeah. So it was like <laughs> <laughs> So it was like we got to know each other mm -hmm. more than the average. Yeah. You had um, communication. Yeah, we had, had a lot of that. communication. So gotcha. it was like if we didn't attract each other mentally, mm -hmm. you out of there. Out of there. Gotcha. So that's what's up, man. What about I, you? I think for me, um, <clears throat> man, I'll never forget, it was August 2011, man. Uh, she told me I'm a king amongst men. And I never heard anything like that. And I was like, yo, I need I need that type of language in my life forever. And you know, like we, we're interested in boxing and we do some boxing. Uh, uh -huh. A lot of people think that the outcome of the fight is predicated on just the boxer's training and nope. his diet. That's a part of it, but a lot mm -hmm. of it has to do with that dude's cornerman. Mm -hmm. Like who who's giving him instructions, who could point out stuff that he can't see. And I recognize that this was a woman that could inspire me to fight in life, can uh, inspire me to be more godly, that can uh, inspire me to uh, just really be a better man. And so yeah. um, the language that she spoke, because I believe the mouth of a woman is an activator. Right. What she activated in me is something that I said, you know, I need something. I need, I need this type of voice, this type of woman in my life forever. And you know, it's crazy. Yeah. A lot of people think that men are attracted just to how she looks. She could be fine, but if she not, you know, a helper, if she doesn't represent, you know, character and integrity, that stuff don't matter. It really a man could tell you real quick the woman you play with versus the woman you marry. Right. And so I think for both of us, we could agree that our wives had um, marriage quality all on them. Straight off the rip. Yeah. yeah. So one one of the thing that um, I think we should get an outlook on, like, what do you think about men hurting? Like, when men hurt, like, mm -hmm. you think men can actually admit to it or? A lot don't. A lot of men don't. Um, I blame society and a lot of times our upbringing. I think that they put so much pressure on us. Like even when we're little boys, stop crying. What you crying for? Shut mm -hmm. up, suck it up, be tough. Which right. a part of that is necessary because you don't want a man no, that's, it is. that's weak and you know uh, doesn't have strength for himself. But at the same time, if we're not careful, that will condition him to grow up to be a man that does not know how to vent. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, because the, the mouth is the ventilation system for the heart. And if a man does not know how to express when he's hurt, doesn't know how to express, this happened when I was six, this happened, this is how I felt when my daddy left and never came back. This is how, You're going to be in a relational context uh, with a man that constantly speaks the language of bondage. And the language of bondage is, I'm good, right. I'm straight, I'm cool. All he's saying is, I never was taught how to vent. That's, that's crazy. It's like... Being a father, right? Mm -hmm. I've got a son, so it's like, I, I feel them same qualities I'd be passing over to him in certain areas. Like, if we, we run in somewhere and he's trying to catch me and I turn around, he falls over and he looks at me like, <laughs> like waiting for me to give him a reaction. 
I'm be like, man, get up, man. Yeah. Like my wife will try and go over and pick him up. I'm like, man, leave him. <laughs> like, let him get up, man. He's, he's all right. He's a boy. Like, he yeah. needs to get scratched up. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, man up. But like, in certain areas, like if if you go to school and you struggling in class. Like, I don't want you to ever feel like you can't come and talk to me. Like, oh, my dad might not approve. Like, he's always mm-hmm. telling me to suck up and mm-hmm. deal with it myself. Like, come and talk to me because I'm, yeah. I'm there to help. Yeah, balance. So it's like, yeah. in certain areas, I, I'm not going to send you to your room because yeah. you cry. But if you cry for no reason, I'm like, man, what are you crying for? Yeah. So it's like... Yeah. I get, and, and I think, too, um, what's easier for your son and then my son is if he has a father that knows how to express himself. Exactly. And he has a father that teaches him how to express himself. If something hurt, nothing wrong. Nothing is wrong with admitting that it hurt. But we're not going to wallow in the pain. But we don't want to become men that are so callous and so hard that when our wives need us to talk, I'm straight. You know, or something is really troubling us. I, I don't have a... Go ahead. You know, like, I, I remember vividly, right? My granddad was the strongest person I knew. Mm-hmm. Right? No one ever really saw him break. But, like... Everyone knew like when his wife died or when my grandma died, a little part of him died, but he never showed it. Mm-hmm. And I just remember one night, he just broke down and just let it all out to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think no one else witnessed it. So for me, I was like, man, the strongest guy in my life yeah. actually broke down, but I didn't see weakness. Yeah. Like it was actually the strongest thing I think <clears throat> I've ever seen him do. And I, I could feel like the, the weight lift off his shoulders. Like yeah. that to me, mm-hmm just set the tone on how I raised my child. So That's like, good. That's yeah. good. I think sometimes depression, many times depression is just a person who did not have, um, did not have somebody to talk to. Right. And so they bottle, they, you know, they bottle all this stuff up. And we know uh, uh, build-ups lead to blow-ups. If we allow stuff mm-hmm. to keep building up. Um, and then for ladies watching this, you know, I would just encourage you like, man, allow God to heal him in certain areas. There's certain things that you can help him heal in and there's certain things that God has to help him heal in because right. if you don't, you'll never be able to be his wife. You'll just be his nurse. So uh, speaking of that, man, why do, why, why, well, it's a little off topic, but why do you think men don't really go to church? Like it seems to be a woman dominated audience. Like men are kind of disenchanted with attending church, especially every Sunday. I think with this, I can only go back to culture. Mm-hmm. Right, so being from England, church is just like that building on the side of the road that's only active when people get married or people die. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like either you want to go or you don't. Like yeah. it's never like, all right, we're gonna go every Sunday, like tradition. Don't get me wrong, like people still went, but it wasn't just big. Yeah. So like, and plus it's boring. Like, well, the churches I was the churches I was at was like just like oh, everyone singing like hymns, and so I was really like out of it. Yeah. But then coming to America, <laughs> coming to America, I sound like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> um, it's like I seen a church on every corner. I seen people real strict yeah. in going, and I had a chance to really visit different churches. And plus, I was going through so much in my life that I didn't know how to handle by myself. Mm-hmm. And then my wife, she went to church. So I was just like, you know what? Let me give it a try. Yeah. And I heard, I heard someone say, man, only a man can take his family to church. Yeah. So I was just like, man, let me try this out and really just step into it fully. Mm-hmm. And since then, like things have happened that's unexplainable that really I can only put my trust in God and know yeah. that he was the reason that my life has just excelled. Yeah. So I think like just Culture. different cultures, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one one culture may like attend church every week and another one hardly ever attends it. Exactly. Uh, I think, man, just from Western Hemisphere Christianity and growing up in church my whole life, man, I think sometimes uh, men can be disenchanted with church due to the feminization of Jesus. Like that's very true. Like we present him as this weak, uh, frail. Blonde hair, hair, blue eyes, his hair is his (laughs) perm. You know, he's a skinny hipster looking guy. It's like, that's not, I don't really want, that's not manhood to me. And I think if if we present that, and that's not really an accurate biblical description of who Jesus was. We know that he was a Middle Eastern man. He was a carpenter, so he was lifting wood and hammering. Mm -hmm. So he probably had some bulk to him. Um, He had a beard. His Mm -hmm. eyes were like fire, hair like wool. Uh, you know, he, he was he was all man, God man, and I, he's the apex of masculinity. And I think if we present him 
with an accurate biblical version of who he is, right. then maybe that will cause men to like, you know, this is somebody that I want to model my life around. And then a lot of times, man, churches are, um, they, they could, not all churches, but some churches really take advantage of people. And I don't think people like attending a church where the pastor's getting wealthy off the members right. versus the members getting wealthy from the pastor's love right. and spiritual nutrition and wisdom. So right. the house has to be an infrastructure that's edifying the body. And when a house does that, I think men are willing to participate. The most masculine and powerful thing a man can do is worship and praise. But right. say unfortunately, that, you might as well say that again so they can, <laughs> so they can hear it. Yeah, man. That's the most powerful thing a man can do is worship and praise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Life has a way of knocking you down on your knees. And sometimes it takes for that to happen for a man to recognize that's the most powerful position mm -hmm. on your knees. So coming from that, kind of going back to what I said before, what I asked before, like, what about when men need help? Do you think, mm. like, uh, all right, you already have something, so just go ahead and take it. Of course, all right. I think one of the biggest problems, man, is men don't know how much help they need. Okay, so the man's a leader, the woman's a helper, right? <clears throat> so Preach. I think the leader doesn't know how much he needs help. Preach. And then the help doesn't know how much she needs to be led. Pay attention. <laughs> and then there's sometimes the leader doesn't even know how to lead and the helper doesn't even doesn't even know how to help. And now we want to come together, you know, to death do its part. Of course we're gonna have problems, of course we're gonna have divorce, Confusion. of course. Yes, because you don't recognize that, yo, I need this. Like my wife is my divine assistant. Like I believe that there's some places in my life that I cannot get to without her presence. She is my helper. She is my God looked at my life and said, This man's gonna need help to continue to build my empire. I have to send him somebody that'll help push him. That is really, to me, uh, one of the beauties of having a wife, you know? If, if when Adam was in the garden, he was like, okay, it's, it's not good for man to be alone. You know, I'll create him a suitable helper. This dude had to be doing something for God to send him, you know, help. Mm -hmm. And you can't ask for one, bring something to the table. You don't have a table. It's like, right. I, right, right, <laughs> I, right, I need right. help. I need help in my life. And the man that says he does not need help, you can't help. Truly needs help indeed. Yeah. I think like, um, man, I heard this guy say, and I forget who it was, but I'll never forget what he said. A man can get a house, mm -hmm. but only a woman can make it a home. Uh, now, look, facts. that stuck with me, <laughs> but it didn't just hit me Yeah. until mm -hmm. my wife being in the army, she had to go for three weeks. Like once a year, she'll go for three weeks. And in that three weeks, I go watch my son. <laughs> so you gotta think, I go go to work, take care of myself, take care of him, take him to daycare, mm -hmm. make sure he gets on the bus to go to school. Yeah. So I'm like, man, then when he gets home, I gotta make sure I eat, gotta make sure he eats, gotta make sure we're both babes. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like a real toss for me. Like, yeah. I, he, he loves noodles, so I'm just like, noodles and nuggets, three weeks, mm. he can survive. <laughs> man, I made him noodles, he looked at me like, uh, Mommy, where's mommy you know like <laughs> mommy don't make noodles like this yeah <laughs> so i was like man like yeah. just just little house chores mm -hmm. like she makes it seem so easy yeah Bring but like value. i guess we just take advantage of that because they're always there until they actually leave you know like man this house isn't a home without yeah. her yeah and, and some dudes don't know what they had until it's what they they don't know what they have until it's what they had until, and someone else yeah is, somebody else has it and right. uh yeah man I, I i think one of the most powerful uh species god made is a woman i mm -hmm. really do you know god made her to help when a woman shows up help just showed up exactly. and uh i think sometimes though ladies have to be careful of trying to help people that they don't have all in their life for like the reason your help isn't helping this brother is because he needs somebody else help not your help and you right. got to be able to know your value enough to know like i can't help this particular guy with this this somebody this is another woman's issue mm -hmm. and then because i believe when it's yours there's just a fit you know like uh you and crystal just fit uh, yep. me and tanisha we just fit that doesn't mean that we don't have struggles but uh to the best of our capability and of course through god's help we're thriving we're not just surviving and i think that's really what people want you don't want to survive you want to thrive exactly yeah so uh hope you guys enjoy this we're gonna do more of it uh conversations like this yep. um when kings talk 
Expect more to be coming your way. Once again, I'm Jerry Flowers, my brother. Warren Francis. And this is when Kings Talk. Be on the lookout for more.